everyone. My name is Min Dodo. I'm from Central People's Hospital of Yichang, Hubei Province. It's an honor for me to share a case of tinea capitis with you. Tinea capitis is a type of fungal infection on the scalp and hair, which mainly affects children aged from three to seven years old. In this case, the patient was a three-year-old boy. Who was presented with a two-week history of alopecia on his first visit to the doctor? There was an annular hair loss area with scaling on the parietal scalp, which was considered as tinea capitis. The microscopy examination of the lesion of hairs revealed endothrix fungal hyphae. We could figure out hyphae and spores in lesion of hairs through fluorescence microscopy. The boy was diagnosed as tinea capitis for sure. Direct microscopy examination is necessary in diagnosing tinea capitis. Compared with potassium hydroxide, fluorescence microscopy can accurately identify the fungal infections by specific staining of the fungal cell wall. We also culture the lesional hairs on SDA medium at 27 Celsius for 14 days. Yellow-colored clones with radiating hyphae grew on the agar. This is the microscopy examination of the clony, which reveals typical large macroconidia of M. canis. This is the smear of toenail from an onychomycosis patient under microscope. However, you could barely see anything relates to fungus. But when I turn up the UV light, things become different. Now we could see hyphae hidden in the specimen of toenail very clearly. In most areas of China, M. canis is the main species that causes tinea capitis in children, which are always associated with exposure to cats or dogs. Tinea capitis infected by M. canis can be directly confirmed by using Wu's lamp. The species demonstrate bright green fluorescence in lesional hairs under Wu's lamp. So the doctor and I decided to take Wood's lamp test for the boy when his parents told us that their pet cat was diagnosed with dermatophytosis a few days earlier. These are the lesional hairs of the boy demonstrated bright green fluorescence under Wood's lamp. Dermoscopy is a useful adjunctive tool in diagnosing tinea capitis as well. These are the Morse code-like hairs and corkscrew hairs in alopecia area of the boy. Which are considered characteristic dermoscopic features of tinea capitis. The boy was treated with oral itraconazole capsules and topical luliconazole cream. Hairs in alopecia areas were still loose and easy to pull out after being treated for four weeks. Endothrix fungal hyphae could still be reviewed by microscopy examination in the lesion of hairs. No recurrence was reported at a two-month follow-up visit. While microscopy examination of hairs in the alopecia area showed negative with fungus as well, since I work in the lab of dermatology department, it is very convenient for me to reach patients and to communicate with doctors. The diagnosis of tinea capitis needs clinical experience, which makes it especially important for doctors and lab technicians to communicate with each other. Lab examinations are auxiliary diagnosis methods in tinea capitis. They help observe the recovery during the treatment, while doctors can adjust patients' medications based on examination results. Okay, that's all for the case. I hope that we all could learn something from it. Wish you have a nice day. Thank you.